All right. Plotting fractions and decimal numbers on the number line. We can use number lines to represent fractions and decimal numbers along with whole numbers. Let's say we need to mark the fraction one and one fourth on the number line. We can guess that it lies somewhere between one and two, but how do we find the exact location? To find the correct position of one and one fourth, we need to divide the distance between one and two into an equal number of parts. The number of parts is the same as the number in the denominator of the fraction, which is four in our example. The upper number line shows the distance between one and two divided into four equal parts using three marks. The numerator of the fraction is one, so the first of the three marks, which we count moving from one toward two, gives us the position of one and one fourth on the number line. Okay, so what they're showing, or talking about basically, is if we have fractions, it's a little bit more challenging for students to be able to put them on a number line because we can see easily the integers, one, two, zero, negative one, but sometimes it's more difficult to see the parts between and knowing where exactly that goes on. So when goes. So when we see one and one fourth, we know how many sections to divide a whole into because that's actually part of a whole. Our wholes are from zero to one, from one to two, that would be a whole. And in order to find out fourths, we need to divide that whole into four equal parts, as you can see that they did here. So if we have a denominator of four, that tells us how many equal parts we need. So if I have one and one fourth, that is this point right here, okay? Any questions on that? So the denominator of the fraction tells us how many sections we need to divide that whole into. And then the numerator, one of the fraction part, tells us how many of those fourths we need. To plot a decimal number on the number line, we need to divide the distance between two integers into 10 equal parts using nine marks. The 10 spaces represent the tenths between two integers. Let's look at an example. To mark the number 1.8 on the number line, divide the distance between one and two into 10 parts. As shown in the lower number line, the eight mark moving from one toward two is the position of the number 1.8 on the number line. Okay, so again, if we look at that upper number line, oops, I wanted to hold that down first. If we look at this upper number line and we're talking about the decimal 1.8, we have divided that whole into 10 parts. Where do we get the 10 from? Why is it 10 parts? Somebody unmute and tell me why you think it's 10 parts that we divide that whole into. Does anybody know why it's 10 parts? Because don't you still have to calculate it from 1 and 2? So 1 and 2 are equal to any 8 parts in between. So Right. So why, why do we divide it into 10 equal parts here, though? What is it about 1.8 that makes us divide this section between the 1 and 2 into 10 equal parts and not 4 like we did up here? Why is it 10 here? Can somebody tell me how to write 1.8 as a fraction? One over eight? Um, no, anybody else have a guess? Well, one is gonna be our whole number, right? So it's gonna be a mixed number. How do I write 0.8 as a fraction? One over eight, so it'd be one, one over eight. Good guess. This is actually eight tenths, isn't it? Is that one and eight tenths? Oh, okay. So I would write it like this, right? So 1.8 equals one and eight tenths like that. Do you understand that? Is there anybody who doesn't understand that? 
No, I understand it. I, I you just weren't connecting the two, right? Honestly. Yeah. So this tells us then, because the denominator is 10, that we have to have this divided into 10 equal parts. If we had another number, this would be a 100 as our denominator. And that's pretty small. We'd have to divide the space between the 1 and 2 into 100 equal parts. If we had this number, that would give us a denominator of 1,000. So we would have to have a thousand parts between the one and the two. We're not really going to be plotting hundreds and thousands in sixth grade. So we really only have to worry about the tenths right now. But the reason we have the 10 equal parts is because this place value is in the tenths place. So we would have 10 equal parts. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes? No? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. If, if it doesn't, make sure that you let me know, okay? So I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to pause play again, and we're going to be moving on to the opposite of a number. The opposite of a number. The opposite of a number is the number with its sign flipped. If the number is negative, its opposite is that number with a positive sign. If the number is positive, its opposite is that number with a negative sign. On the number line, the opposite of a number is the number flipped across point zero. For example, the opposite of one is negative one. Similarly, the opposite of negative one is one. The same idea works for fractions and decimal numbers. For example, the opposite of negative three and two thirds is three and two thirds. The opposite of 3.4 is negative 3.4. Okay, so let me scroll down and get a little bit. Um, so I like this tutorial in lots of ways, uh, but the one thing I don't really like is that it doesn't talk to you too much about the definition of opposite. So it tells you how to write an opposite, but it tells you, uh, it doesn't tell you what an opposite is. So what an opposite is, is a number that's an equal distance, but on the op equal distance from zero, but on the opposite side of zero. So we can see that one is one space from zero and negative one is also one space from zero, but the opposite side of zero. OK, that's the same with two and negative two. They're the same distance, just opposite sides. So it's actually really important to think about opposites in relationship to zero. And they don't really talk about that <clears throat> too much in the tutorial but it does tell us easily that all we have to do is change the sign right we just don't always um understand the relationship to zero which is what we need to know okay any questions on that so go ahead and fill in those four spaces in your guided notes so in your guided notes right now you should have these spaces right here filled in so these parts of the opposite of a number and does anybody need more time to fill those in? If you do, just unmute and say, please wait. Okay, so I'm not hearing anybody say, please wait. Um, so I'm going to actually end.